I'm Robert Estrin here at livingpianos.com. The subject today, what is scale design? You may have heard this term before and wondered what it is exactly. We're going to go into the depth of what scale design is today. Well, scale design encompasses not one thing, but the entire design of a piano in regards to how it produces tone. If you look inside a piano, you notice that there are varying lengths of strings. Naturally, the treble strings are shortest and they get gradually longer and longer to the base of the piano. Well, did you know that each piano has a slightly different geometry in how these strings get longer? Not only that, but you notice that there are three steel strings for each note through most of the piano. But did you know that they are actually different diameters? That's right. The strings on the top are thinner than as you go down, they become thicker. Now, some pianos have what's called a high tension scale where they use a thicker string so it has to be pulled tighter to produce the same pitch. Other pianos have what's called a low tension scale. Is one better than the other? Not necessarily. They're just two different approaches to scale. But that's just one facet. Now, if you go to the lower register of the piano, naturally you have the copper wound strings. Where the strings become copper is different not only on each piano brand, but each model within the brand. For example, on this Steinway Model M, you'll notice that the copper wound strings start before the register break, which brings up another very important point, the register break. What is the register break? Well, you have cross stringing on pianos, and the point at which the strings cross over, that's called the register break. And on this piano, you actually have a couple of copper wound strings just on two notes uh, to the right of the register break. And naturally, there are double wound copper strings, and at a certain point, they become single wound. Well, it's different on all pianos. These are all parts of scale design. Some pianos might not have any uh, of these copper wound strings in this section, and they'll start right at the register break. And pianos have different numbers of the single wound strings, and some pianos, like my Baldwin SD10 Concert Grand, even has triple wound copper strings. Uh, so you have triple strings that are copper wound, I should say, which is quite unusual. So these are all aspects of scaling, but what are some others? Well, where the string is actually hit by the hammer affects the tone immeasurably. So the exact place along the length of the string that it hits. Then there are other technologies like what about the parts of the string, the non-speaking length of the string? That is, the part that is beyond where the hammer hits. Some pianos like this have what's called duplex scaling, which allows the tone to resonate freely by having sympathetically useful overtones, by keeping this unmuted, whereas other pianos will have felt there because they are not musically useful overtones. Is one better than the other? Well, theoretically, duplex scaling is an enhancement, but there are certainly great pianos that don't have duplex scaling or that have other types of duplex. You can even have a duplex on the front, and this piano, indeed, the front is free to vibrate, and that is part of the scale design as well. So there are many things that are encompassed in scale design. For example, I haven't even scratched the surface yet. Where the bridges are placed on the soundboard is critical to the tone production. That's one of the reasons that the very early pianos, before they had cross stringing, sometimes called birdcage pianos, the bridges were on the perimeter of the soundboard because you only had one bridge or one uh, set of bridges going in one direction. Whereas modern pianos, ever since the late uh, 1800s have the cross stringing, so you have separate bridges for the treble and bass sections. Some pianos even have more than two bridges with unique scale designs. So there are many different ways to design a piano, and the bottom line is, what does it sound like? There isn't just one solution to this. That, that's why pianos that are designed by computers sometimes are very perfect in a mathematical sense, but don't necessarily offer the pleasure and the beauty that maybe the, the imperfections provide for us. It's part science, but part art. And there are many different ways to create great pianos. And the bottom line is how the piano sounds and feels to you. Thanks for joining me, Robert Estrin here at livingpianos.com. I welcome all your questions for future videos. See you next time.